In Solid 2011, we have four new features that are specific to CAD. We have the ability to group multiple CAD objects together. So let's come in here to Solid. Let's go into CAD. I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw a few different uh, CAD elements here on the screen. I'm just going to draw a few things to make a basic uh, symbol here. Okay, now we'll switch to the Select tool. You'll notice that each of these items that I've drawn are an individual item. Now we can, using the new group feature, we could group all of these items together. How we'll do that is we'll drag a box using the Select tool around all of that CAD, then right click on it and choose Group. Now when that series of items become grouped, that means that if I click on it, I'm actually clicking on the group itself. So the, the entire group could get picked up, moved, it could get changed uh, in the scale, but that's an entire group. All of those formerly individual components now form a single group. If I right click, I can also choose ungroup so that I could restore them back to be an individual items. So let's delete that and let's go back to the help file. We also have symbols import as a single group of CAD objects. Now in Solid 2011, symbols that exist in my symbol library, when they get placed they're going to form a group. So bringing in the north arrow here, when I use the select tool to click on it, it actually selects the entire group of CAD elements that are within that group. So nothing in here is an individual anymore. That means that I can very quickly grab it, change the scale, change the size on it, change the color, which will affect all components in that group. And again, if I want to ungroup them, I could just right click and choose ungroup. Okay, so that's the two new grouping features. Let's delete that and go back to the help file. When we draw a line in CAD, the length is the default field. So let's find out how that works. Come back to CAD. We go to lines. Now over here on the left hand side of the screen, you'll notice that the length field is automatically the highlighted field. So now all I have to do is just type in the length that I want that line to be. So the length field on the left hand side of the screen is the default field when drawing lines. That's actually a nice feature right there. We also have a reverse selection option. So let's find out how that works. Let's go ahead and draw a whole bunch of uh, different lines here and let's add a circle to it. Okay, so now we have a variety of different items. Now if I left click and highlight or select the circle and then right click and choose reverse selection then what will happen is the selection will switch from the circle to the rest of the items in the view. And also if I right click on the currently selected items and tell the reverse selection, then it will revert the selection back to the circle just like that. Okay, there's one more item in here that affects CAD and that's going to be in the drawings area. The dimension live drawing scenes using CAD with snap points. That's actually a really powerful feature because without that you would have to you would have to go in and switch your live drawing to a static drawing in order to add dimensions. So let's use an example here. I'm going to draw a wall and place a cabinet on the wall. Now if I right click and choose to live drawing, once I get that to the drawing page I may discover that I want it to have an additional dimension on here. Well I can just highlight the drawing scene and go to CAD. You'll notice we have snap points available in here. 
for this scene. So now I could go to dimensions and I could place a dimension here. And this will not affect the fact that this is still a live drawing. In other words, if I need to change the size of this uh, base cabinet, the live drawing scene will continue to work properly. Now in CAD we actually have one more additional new feature. So let's go into CAD. We have the bend tool. Now if I have a line that I've drawn in CAD, I can select the bend tool and I can left click on the line and my cursor is attached now to the line and I have the ability to bend that line much like forming an arc. So let's do that again. I've drawn another line. I'm going to use the bend tool. I'm going to left click. Now when I left click I do not need to hold down the mouse button. I simply left click and the, the bent line is automatically attached to my cursor. Pretty nice feature. We'll take a look at the new rendering features in Solid 2011. First of all, we'll start with Enhanced Render options are now in 3D View Properties. So let's go take a look at that. If I go to the 3D View and I right click on the screen and I go to Properties, we have a new tab here for Enhancements and all of your Enhancement settings are located right here. Okay, the other new feature related to Enhanced View is the Enhanced View is now a single click to execute. And that is also located right here on the ribbon bar. So you click on that and it immediately will do your rendering. Okay, we also have the render mode now sticks with change to line drawing on view move disabled. For example, if I go to render mode and I go to fill, when I finish rotating or changing anything about the 3D view, the rendering comes back. Same thing for the texture mode. Very nice feature right there. Okay, so next we have also in the 3D view, we have added a new point light. So when we go to 3D and we go to lights, the new point light is this light right here. You have all of your different settings for the point light here. And the point light has replaced the previous light that we used to put in, which was a spotlight. And of course, the point light can be changed from point light to either a directional or spotlight. We'll go ahead and do a render with the light in here. We can see that point light right here on the ceiling. You can grab the point light, move it to any location in the view that you need it. You could change the height and the angle of that and position it wherever you need it for your lighting. Okay, now the next item we have is we have new and de improved default wood grain textures. We'll go to the material catalog here at the splash screen to take a look at that. So let's close this job. And here at the splash screen we'll go to material. And to access that I'm just going to click on the material texture for the face. That opens up the select a texture window to the wood tab. Now we can see several of the new textures here. Now these have been improved in the fact that these are high resolution images. You could tell the difference between this high resolution birch as compared to the older low resolution ash as well as the new re high resolution ash here. So we have several new high resolution images that you could use for a texture and I'm going to show you a sample right here. Now with this sample we have on the left the cabinet is using a texture that is a low resolution texture and on the right we are using a high resolution texture. You can see a dramatic difference in the two rendering textures.